So you're a full stack developer. At some point, you've probably wondered, should I start my full stack project with the front end, the back end, or the database first? Maybe 90% of you already have your preference. But today, we will see the most efficient way to start your full stack project. And this is the exact flow most experienced developers use. There's no single right answer on how you should start, but trying the approach that the most developers use might just save you time and headaches. So the best way to start is to start from the front, go to the back, and come back to the middle. In simple terms, start by designing and developing your front end, then your database, and lastly your back end. Now, let me explain why this workflow is recommended by most developers. And just to be clear, this isn't a strict rule. At the end of the day, it's about your personal preference. If you'd rather start with the database and work your way to the front end, that's totally fine. But the approach I'm showing you is the one many experienced developers rely on because it saves time and reduces rework. Step one, start with the front end. So why begin with the front end? Because the user interface tells you exactly what data you'll need. What you can do is create a static components with fake data. You don't really have to fetch data to display. Just hard code the information and you can immediately see the shapes and field your database and API must support. Let's say you're building an online learning platform like Udemy. If your UI shows a course card, you instantly know you'll need fields like image, course name, author, and price. That information will guide you later when designing your database. Step two, define the data model or database schema. Once the front end is clear, the next step is your data model or database schema. Here you define your tables or collections, the relationships between them and any constraints. Because you already know what the UI requires, structuring your data becomes much easier. For example, since the course card needs a course name, author, and price, your schema can be designed with those fields in mind. And this is why the workflow works so well. If you started with the database first, you'd be making guesses and most likely you'd have to redo your schema later to match what the front end actually needs. Step three, build the back end. Finally, once your front end and database are in place, you can build the API to connect them. The key here is to work feature by feature. That means applying the same workflow for each feature separately. When building the back end, only create the endpoints required by the feature you're currently working on. This avoids over-engineering and keeps development lean. For example, if you're working on a course feature, just build the CRUD endpoints for courses and nothing more until the next feature comes along. This same goes for your front end and database. Just focus on one feature at once. So that was the overall flow on how to approach a full stack project. Now let's also look at some best practices that you can follow to speed up your development and save you headaches down the road when working on a project. Number one, work feature by feature. Don't try to build the entire app in one go. Instead, pick one feature, like user authentication, and take it through the full workflow, front end, data model, and back end. Once it works, move on to the next feature. This way, you always have a working app as you add new functionality. For example, if you're building authentication, just focus on the login and sign up pages, the required tables, and the API for authentication. Don't worry about courses or payments yet. Finish one feature, then move to the next. Number two, keep it simple. Avoid over-engineering. You don't need to make your feature production ready when starting. Focus on creating an MVP first. Only then you can optimize or expand for production. Our main goal is to make the feature available first, and the optimization part can be done after our requirement is fulfilled. Trust me, you'll save a lot of time if you do this. Number three, Iterate, don't waterfall. Full stack development is iterative, not a rigid step-by-step -step process. You'll often need to tweak the front end, adjust your schema, or add new endpoints as you go. That's normal, and it's actually what makes this workflow effective. Lastly, number four, test early, test often. One of the biggest mistakes developers make is waiting until the very end of the project to test. That usually leads to a flood of bugs from every feature making debugging a nightmare. Instead, test each feature as soon as it's complete. Fix issues early, while they're still small and easy to manage, so that once every feature is integrated, less bugs will appear. So these are some of my personal tips as a fellow full-stack developer. I follow the same workflow 
and keep these things in mind when working on a project. So to wrap things up for you, when building a full stack application, the most efficient workflow is to start with the front end, then move to your data model and database, and finally build the backend API. Make sure to work feature by feature, keep it simple, iterate as you go, and don't forget to test early and often. Remember, this isn't a rigid rule book. It's a proven approach that has helped me and most developers move faster and avoid unnecessary rework. Try it out on your next project and see how much smoother the process feels. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit like, subscribe for more content, and let me know in the comments. What's your preferred way of starting a full stack project?